This stack of paper is for my dissertation alone. Hello internet! Welcome to the fact that the last couple of weeks have been ridiculously and uncomfortably hot and today I'm wearing a jacket. British summer. So I've talked about this a little bit before in a previous video but I really wanted to kind of talk about it more in depth today. Now that I've had a little bit of a chance to, to try things out, see how I am doing with everything and use this video as a personal therapy session. I'm talking about cutting paper out of my writing routine. Writing as my manuscript, my editing, and of course master's dissertation. So it's been two weeks on the system I talked a little bit about in my June favorites video. I've got to say I have no idea how it's working out yet. I think because a lot of this stuff I was using already doesn't feel like that big of a change but the reason I want to talk about it is because whenever I think about how to go beyond this I always get like really anxious and jittery and I don't really like that feeling. Let's talk about it. But here's the problem. I love notebooks and handwriting writing things. I'm the type of person who can't remember some things unless it's handwritten. When I was doing my, my bachelor's degree, I would type up all my notes. When it came to revising for exams, I didn't copy those notes onto a sheet of paper. I would not remember it. Unfortunately, I'm also not a pencil person. I think this comes from the fact that around halfway through high school, all of the notebooks they were putting out came out with this like waxy finish on the paper. I don't know if this is supposed to make the paper stronger or look shiny or whatever. I have no idea. Pencil does not write well on it. It gets all squeaky and, and weird. So because of this, I had to start learning how to love pens. And now well, I love pens. Going zero waste when paper is all around you is already a problem. But as a writer and someone writing a master's dissertations, notebooks are a real thing that I have to deal with. And when writing my, my manuscripts and my other works in progress, I need a new notebook for every work because it keeps every idea straight. And if I have anything to add to it, I could do it easily by just pulling out a notebook and writing stuff down. Of course, I have like six WIPs going at once with like seven notebooks between them. So it really adds up to a lot of papers and a lot of handwriting with pens. So I'm gonna start by talking about how I've been using it in the past and how I'm gonna try and use things in the future. We're going to start with the easy one and I'm going to talk about paper. I've been trying to go as zero waste and paperless as possible as far as paperless bills, paperless receipts, and mostly paperless reminders. My exceptions are my planners, most importantly my bullet journal. I love my bullet journal and I'm really kind of nervous about what I'm going to do at the end of the year. Am I going to keep using the bullet journal? Am I going to make a new one? I'm kind of a sentimental person so I have a feeling that bullet journals are things that I will just keep forever and I really like it so maybe it's something I'll keep on doing and just kind of put old ones in the loft and I can look back on what I did during a particular year. That would be really fun. So I think that that's the one thing that I probably keep on paper. But as far as the rest of it, once this year is over and these planners are no longer relevant, I probably won't use them anymore. Beyond that though, with so many notebooks, paper is really difficult to think about. It's something that I'm going to be working on trimming down for a really long time. I've mentioned already that I have a notebook for every WIP and honestly, it just worked better that way. Like with my planners, that's something that's going to need to stay on paper at least for right now. It's really good reference especially when I'm revising and there are points I need to flip back and forth between because just typing them up I tend not to remember and keeping them all in notebooks instead of in files gives me the physical separations and a built-in color coordination so basically I really love my notebooks. Having said that the hope is that I will not need to worry about that. I already have the notebooks it's gonna have to stay on paper regardless. I'm not about to waste those notebooks and besides with six works in progress at once I have no business starting a new one. If I ever decide to open up a seventh WIP, I think then I'll have to decide what I'm going to do from there. For my dissertation though, I have used so much paper. I mentioned in my June favorites video that for annotating my second chapter, I printed out 80 sheets of paper. 80? I even knew it at the time that it was a bad idea. The reason why it happened was I got a copy of Macbeth at the library because I'm too broke to buy my own and someone had already gone through and annotated it. So I was like, great, now I can annotate this copy. That's great. And since I was able to do that, I really wanted a physical copy of my other plate. Holding them in my hand, I was like, no, no, why did I do this? It's so stupid. So when I was a junior, my undergrad, I bought myself an iPad with my savings for one reason only, Notes Plus. I got it because when editing my WIPs, 
I thought it was a really bad idea to print out hundred sheets of paper because apparently back then I was intelligent. I don't edit well just on the document screen and I like handwriting annotation so I thought oh yeah let's get a notes app it'll be the perfect way to annotate. I do see the irony here. The second semester of junior year I only used that app to take notes for everything and it was amazing. I got all of my notes handwritten without paper and of course teachers outlawed tech in classes so I had to no longer be using that. While I used Notes Plus it worked really well and I still used it to edit WIPs especially after I finished the manuscript for The Sun and the Soldier. Every edit I've done on that manuscript is stored on the app forever. It's, it's perfect. Since I got the app for that exact reason I honestly have no idea why I didn't just think to use it for my dissertation. At least not for annotations. I am an idiot. That's, that's the answer. So for chapter three I've been annotating on my iPad and taking notes on secondary research in my physical notebooks, the one that I still have to use up. One of them is a magic notebook with a wand pencil. Through my hatred of pencils, I'm using a wand pencil. It's pretty okay, it doesn't sharpen all the way, but it's a wand pencil. So that should help me use up the old notebooks I don't need and save at least 40 pieces of paper next time. And it worked out okay. It was a little difficult to like scroll through the annotations forever and ever. You know, it worked essentially the same way as flipping through notebook paper, so it worked out okay. In future, my Notes Plus app will be the hub for all of my handwritten notes. Point of having notebooks for this dissertation was so that I didn't have to flip through apps to go from notes to outlines. I can keep doing that except go from an iPad to a computer. It's still a physical difference, but without the paper. Once I start my PhD, I'm not even gonna buy notebooks to use as crutches anymore. So I'll have to keep you updated then on how that's working out. That's my solution for paper. Lots more bare and a whole lot more, more of Notes Plus. Really is a good app though. It's, it's helped me a lot. And now for the hard part. Pens are my biggest problem. I have an endless search for the perfect pen quest I've been on since I was literally 12 years old. I love pens and honestly going paperless is the hardest transition for me by far. I just can't keep myself out of the stationery section. I love it. But on top of this I'm also super picky about pens and the search. I'm picky about the way they glide across paper, how much ink comes out at once, how comfortable the grip is, how it writes, the color and darkness of the ink. It's really a lot. So most recently I bought these zebra pens and since I've used their pens before and liked it I thought they might work, but they glided way too easily for how hard I press on the paper and the grip gave my hand cramps. But of course I just bought them. So work pens? I don't know. I don't really use my own pens at work at the moment, but if I can figure out how to maneuver that to working, that's what that's gonna be. When doing research for zero waste ideas, I came across the idea of a fountain pen a lot. I have a fountain pen. Nope, I just said fountain pen. I have a fountain pen. I like my fountain pen, but it came with blue ink, which I hate. So I got my myself a whole lot of fountain pen refills. Fountain pens seem to be a good bet for zero waste writers, but it is not. Obviously it is not. I don't even know why I thought it would be a good idea. The refills come not only wrapped in plastic, they're made of plastic. A pen is gonna last me forever, but I'm gonna have to throw away every single refill. This is a terrible plan. But of course I spent the money on it now, so I have to use it up. But it was really frustrating to realize that I've made this big of a mistake. I do really like this pen and it's far more comfortable to write with than the zebra one, so there's that. So it's becoming my taking notes pen. Since for my dissertation, I still have to take handwritten notes to fill up notebooks, the fountain pen will be really good for that. Work pens should last me a while. Like I said, I still haven't figured out how that's gonna work yet. Work pens are the ones most most often stolen, so the other ones are gonna miss the least. That'll be a good use for them. Someone else can steal them and be much more comfortable writing with them than me. But at least I'm not wasting them, and that's the most important thing. I suppose my fountain pen will be used for book work too after a while. I don't know how long those cartridges are gonna last. Honestly, making that mistake is giving me a lot of actual anxiety. As far as in the future, notebook thing, I have pretty down pat. I know how I'm proceeding with it, I'm confident, and I'm excited about it. It's been working out really well. But as for the pens, I am entirely lost. These cartridges are giving me anxiety and for my manuscripts I like handwriting things but hate pencils which would be the obvious answer plus everything's already written in pen and I really don't like mixing the pens and the pencils and stuff like that it just really bothers me I'm a perfectionist like that which is why I hate blue ink it clashes with the rest of the notebook which is in black so I really don't know how to proceed with this maybe the cartridges will last long enough so I'll have thought of something else by then maybe I'll start liking pencils again maybe I'll find notebooks that pencils can actually write on. But for now, I legitimately have no idea how to approach this. If you have any ideas, please let me know. But hopefully it's not something I really have to think about for a while, save these damn cartridges. That's my rant. I had hopes that talking this through might give me a few more ideas, but it hasn't. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm in the exact same place I was when this video started. I don't know why I expected that. I really don't. I hope at least for the paper thing, this can help people who are writers and are thinking about going zero waste. Obviously putting all of your files on a computer is a really good solution, but if you're like me and you like handwriting things, honestly, investing in a notes app really was a 
a really good investment. I don't regret that purchase at all. If you are watching this and you are a zero waster already and you have a magical solution to my pen problem, please let me know. I'm super open to suggestions. We can be friends. I feel like I say that a lot. It makes me sound like I have no friends. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you liked it. If you did, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I keep forgetting where that is. And please like this video if you want to see more like it. As usual, I've linked all my social media in the description box below. Please check those out. And I post new videos on Fridays. I'll see you next week. Bye.